Hello there and welcome back to my Spooktober challenge. Before I forget, there will be spoilers in this video about the various books that I will be talking about in this spooky book lineup. I've called it a spooky book lineup simply because there are characters in these books that are fantasy based in one way or the other. You've got zombies, witches, werewolves and vampires in this little lineup so yeah so perfect for the Halloween season and s curling up with a pumpkin spice latte or other fruit tea of your choice and now we will begin. No Halloween lineup for books would be incomplete without JK Rowling's Harry Potter series. I'm mostly going to focus on the first book in the series which is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone which actually is I believe the only book in the series to truly have a proper Halloween sequence. You know that one where Ron upsets Hermione so she goes to the girls toilets to cry for ages and then uh, Professor Quirrell runs into the Hogwarts Halloween feast and announces that there's a troll in the dungeon so Harry and Ron go and find Hermione and then they end up knocking out a troll together and becoming good friends as a result of that. That's clearly how you make friends in the Harry Potter world. Knock out a troll! But no, so the series also has a werewolf in the form of Professor Lupin. You've also got people like Sirius and Professor McGonagall who can turn into animals at will. And blatantly you've got all the witches and wizards as well as various sort of animals slash fantastic creatures like um, mermaids and sphinxes and hippogriffs to name a few. Moving on from magical schools you also have another witchcraft school to contend with in this lineup in The Worst Witch by Jill Murphy. So you find yourself uh, joining Mildred Hubble at Miss Cackle's Academy for Witches in this book and basically she is one of the most clumsiest incompetent students that the Academy has ever ever had. She's sort of going around sort of making calamities and making mistakes, turning people into things they shouldn't be by accident, even turning herself into something by accident in one of the books. Um, I loved this series because it made someone like me who felt incompetent in everything she did feel valid and feel that I may be tall and gangly and ridiculous now but one day I'll be a hero and Mildred always ends up succeeding in the long run as a hero in each of the stories that you see. So again you've got people being turned into things, you've got the witches, you've got black cats trying to cling on to broomsticks, although I do have a soft side for Mildred's cat who is actually a little grey tabby because they ran out of black cats to give to the students so Mildred ended up with a tabby. That really struggles to fly which I find quite amusing and I can imagine myself ending up in a si similar scenario. I just have a bit of a soft spot for Mildred Hubble, I really do. Those are the only two books sort of aimed at children in this series. The other books that I'm going to be discussing are actually aimed at adults. So the first book in my list actually became a West End and Broadway musical winning many Olivier and Tony Awards. Of course I am talking about Wicked, The Life and Times of the Wicked Witch of the West by Gregory Maguire. He wrote this book whilst he was in England and he was in the Lake District and he picked out a glove from the mud and he noticed that on each finger he had Dorothy the Scarecrow, the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion, but the thumb was left unadorned. Empty or with a character needing her story told. It was also around this time where Saddam Hussein was being tried and executed for being a dictator and being a jerk and he wanted to sort of discuss what evil is. Can someone become painted as evil based on what people want you to know and as a result Wicked came about. It's actually, the book itself is actually completely different to the musical. The musical is a lot more light-hearted and focuses more on the friendship between Alphabet and Glinda, the two witches in the story. 
Whilst Wicked, the book is actually much more about the political climate of Oz and is so much darker in content. I actually read this book for the first time when I was 14 years of age. Uh, I wasn't initially allowed to read it because um, the foster carers said that it was too adult for me. Well, considering there is an entire section of the book that is basically Elphaba and Fiero having lots of sex, pretty graphic, the 14 year old me's eyes bulged out of her skull. But other than that, you know, it's a brilliant book and I think anybody sort of over the age of 15 should read it because it's a really good education into propaganda, into racism and to injustices in the world. The next book in my series is nowhere near as deep. It's actually pretty silly and it's the Pride, Prejudice and Zombie series by Seth Graham Smith and Jane Austen. Basically this book was written very very simply. The author took a manuscript copy of Pride and Prejudice on put it all onto a from a PDF to a Word document and then just added in his own bits in red. The book I initially was worried was gonna just be completely ridiculous and completely ruin Austen for me forever but I was very very wrong. I actually prefer it. It sounds ridiculous, but I find it so much more feminist because the Bennett sisters aren't just sit or sitting around waiting for the men to save them. They're actually the ones who actually sometimes save the men three quarters of the time. You've got the Bennett sisters trained in the deadly arts and they are running around killing off a, as many of the unmentionables as possible and trying to save England from the scourge of the zombie apocalypse. Bonnets and katanas I think are an excellent mix but we don't talk about the movie. The movie was terrible. I watched it on Netflix because I refused to pay for it because I heard some really bad reviews and I was right. It was really really bad and completely deviated from the book. The next book and final book I'm going to be talking about is Deborah Harkness's A Discovery of Witches. This one is a very modern book for adults and you've got a Diana Bishop who is an academic at the University of Oxford who is also a witch but she's trying to keep all that stuff hidden but she finds this manuscript in one of the libraries and it completely changes her life. She, it's one of these magical documents that apparently has been hidden and lost for the past sort of 500 years. And there are quite a few people who are interested in the book, including a vampire called Matthew, who has been around for like 1,500 years and is also currently working at the university, I think as a geneticist, I can't, can't pronounce it. And these two kind of come together and they're trying to protect this document and at the same time they fall in love and Diana realises her potential and ends up going with Matthew to time walk into the Elizabethan period where the book ends. But there are at least two other books in that trilogy which I haven't read yet uh, but I need to get around to rereading A Discovery of Rich Witches because it's been a few years and I also need to read the other two. What I found really really cute was that there is a Halloween sequence in A Discovery of Witches again. I think out of all the books only Harry Potter and A Discovery of Witches does have a Halloween segment where in this one Diana and Matthew are giving out candy to trick-or-treaters and it's just so cute and so sweet considering all the other horrible things that happen to them in the book. So yes that was my lineup of spooktacular books that I recommend reading over the festive period. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said all the books that I discuss are in the description below if you want to look more into them. What are your favourite books to read during this time of year? Let me know in the comments. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please give me a like, a comment and subscribe and maybe check out some of my other social media as well. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye!